my lovely, lovely imps, uh, we have to have a frank discussion about the state of politics here in the United States right now. Um, just yesterday, Donald Trump released what uh, I can only describe as one of the most uh, 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 mask off invectives against trans people and queer people generally uh, that I have seen from him in the entire time that he's been on the political stage. Uh, this is one of the most aggressive accelerations in rhetoric from one of the most influential politicians in the entire world. Now, Donald Trump is no longer president, but as we all know, he has a very, very large uh, uh, influence still on the American Republican Party, the GOP, um, and his rhetoric uh, uh, influences the rhetoric of the rest of the country, uh, uh, especially his loyalists, of which there are many. Um, in addition, uh, Trump still claims that he intends to run for president again uh, next year. Uh, and with the sort of rhetoric that we are about to see, we're going to watch the video together. I want people to be, um, as to look at this as soberly as possible. Okay. Um, on this channel, I have talked about, uh, the rising genocidal rhetoric and what I believe to be an ongoing genocide of queer people in this country. Uh, I have a video called this should concern you. Um, which you can search on my channel, search my name, and this should concern you, and you'll find the video. This lays out a full case for, uh, a, a, a legislative case for why there is an on, an ongoing push, uh, for genocide against trans people and queer people in the United States of America. If you are not sold on that premise, you can go watch that video and you can see where I'm coming from. Uh, however, uh, what we are seeing now is honestly even worse than what I detailed in that video. Um, over the last uh, month or so, there has been a massive surge in anti-trans specifically uh, legislation um, all across the country. Multiple states uh, are passing uh, bans on medically necessary care for trans youth. And uh, I, I really, really need everyone who's listening to this video. First of all, uh, I really want you, you don't have to share my video necessarily, but I really want you to tell people about this and I really want you to get the word out there. People need to confront this, um, honestly, because uh, if we don't do anything about this, if we just sit here and wait as the rhetoric gets worse and worse and worse, as the actions get worse and worse and worse, as a uh, judicial precedent is built to bar trans people from scientifically proven medically necessary treatments, uh, as trans people are squeezed out of public life and are accused of more and more ridiculous things, we risk allowing a hate movement, the likes of which we've never seen before, or at least not in any recent memory, uh, to to foment in our country, and uh, and 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 it will lead to death. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The internet has changed the game. Um, in the past, uh, we saw hate movements use mass media and propaganda to propagate themselves and to gain popularity, uh, to then gain the support necessary to enact. Uh, enormous, enormous waves of violence against uh, the people who were targeted. We saw this. Everybody, of course, knows the first example that comes to mind to most people is in World War II. But of course, there, uh, you know, with the Nazis using mass media to promote anti-Jewish uh, uh, rhetoric on mass uh, through magazines, TV shows, radios, movies, just bombarding people. But the internet has really changed the game um, in this regard. Uh, hate can spread faster and more aggressively than ever before, and it can reach even further. Um, if America uh, allows itself to fall into full-fledged, uh, you know, transphobic and homophobic fascism, the rest of the world is going to feel that too. It is more important than ever that we take these things seriously. Um, and I just want to, as an added note, I just want to point out that this morning, on one of the most popular uh, uh, social media sites in the world, uh, trending in the United States 
was the hashtag groomers. Um, if you're if you've been sort of living under a rock uh, uh, and haven't been caught up on that, not to be rude, but but it's been all over the place. The groomers uh, rhetoric is a uh, is is a it is a libel. It is a uh, mass propaganda campaign that convinces people that uh, everyday trans, gay, queer people are engaging in grooming simply by existing in real life. The core arguments of this libel basically state that uh, it, it asserts that being gay is inherently a sexual thing, that it is a, inherently a predatory thing, that being trans is inherently predatory and is inherently sexual, and that the presence of trans people and gay people should not be tolerated in public, but especially around children, which of course is violent and absurd. Um, uh, 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 it, it is a, it is nothing short of a libel. It, the goal is to try and associate to the strongest degree possible, uh, uh, uh gay people, LGBT people in general, queer people, trans people, um, with, with, uh, violent or, 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 yeah, with violent child predators. This is an evil, uh, an evil attempt and it has only one possible outcome. Okay. There is only one outcome of this which is violence. The, the goal of such outrageous rhetoric based on, obviously based on nothing, but, but the goal of, of such outrageous rhetoric is to provoke a violent reaction. It is to provoke the idea that gay people are a imminent threat to the children of the nation, to the people of the nation. Um, and what, and, and, and an imminent, res, uh, an imminent threat in their minds must be dealt with violently. I want you all to understand the seriousness of this, okay? Uh, I am just a YouTuber. I am just a, a sort of video entertainer who does some educational and political content as well. Uh, there's only so much I can do. Um, but I want you guys to take this seriously and understand what I'm saying. Because if we don't fight back against this, if we don't push back against this hard in every way imaginable, if we do not prepare for the violence, the violence will catch us in the dark. And... We already know what that looks like. We have seen countless genocides across this planet. We have seen what it looks like. We have seen the death. We have seen the erasure of history. I'm not willing to go down without a fight. I'm not willing to go quietly. I'm not willing to let the works and the lives of, of trans people, queer people all over the world disappear, okay? So please, please take this seriously. Please, I am begging you, if you are out there and you don't necessarily believe that there's a genocide or whatever, hear me out on this. There is. This isn't this is a genocide that is building. It is ongoing. There are states right now, as we are about to discuss, who are currently violating all objective scientific reason in order to to create laws that target and harm queer children, that attempt to erase the history and also erase the public presence of queer people. Please take this seriously and please understand exactly what the goal of this is. And also remember that it will not ever stop with us. Now that I've said that, it's time for us to discuss. It's time for us to, to it's time for us to watch the video itself, okay? And we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of other things going on that are associated with this video, but first we need to watch the video itself. So please join me as we listen in to this absolutely uh, unhinged Donald Trump speech, okay? This was a, a, a official release from his campaign, as you will soon discover. This was released yesterday as a part of his running for office. Let's watch this. Make sure the audio's up. Here we go. The left-wing gender insanity being pushed in our Make sure the audio levels are fine. Our children. It's actually very quiet. Damn, we all joke about leftist audio, but let's be real. This is some right-wing audio here. Let's do this. Is an act of child abuse. Jesus, it's so quiet. Abuse, very simple. Here's my plan to stop. Here we go. All right, let's listen to this. The left-wing gender insanity being pushed on our children 
is an act of child abuse. Very simple. Here's my plan to stop the chemical, physical, and emotional mutilation of our youth. On right out the gate. Just literally the first 15 seconds is him making a completely false statement, uh, perpetuating a, a massive libel. There is no uh, chemical uh, sexual mutilation of children uh, going on by uh, around trans people in this country. Um, I mean, we could talk about the facts of this, which I will to some degree as we go through this conversation. Um, but to frame it this way has only one purpose. It is to create a panic. This is what he's trying to do, okay? I want you to understand that right out the front, he is uh, signing on to this groomer libel. Just explicitly, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He has decided he believes that it, it, there must be an end to the mutilation of children, which he does not prove. He does not have any evidence for. It does not exist. There is no uh, ritualistic mutilation of children uh, that is going on in this country. Not even, not even close. This is a call for violence. Let's listen again. The left-wing gender insanity being pushed on our children is an act of child abuse. Very simple. Here's my plan to stop the chemical, physical, and emotional mutilation of our youth. On day one, I will revoke Joe Biden's cruel policies on so-called gender-affirming care. Ridiculous. A process that includes giving kids puberty blockers, mutating their physical appearance, and ultimately performing surgery on minor children. I'm going to finish the entire video, but I just want to point out, I want you, I want people to understand that puberty blockers are given to young trans people because it stops puberty, which can be resumed. And in fact, the long-term effects of puberty blockers have been extremely well tested by medicine and doctors know what they're doing when they give puberty blockers. There is no long-term harm to uh, young people who are given puberty blockers. However, there is demonstrable, well-evidenced harm to allowing children who are expressing gender dysphoria to proceed with their biological uh, uh, puberty unchecked, no downside to giving them medicine. But the, uh, the other side is that irreversible changes that harm that person's mental well-being uh, proceed. I want that to be 100% clear to everybody who's going to be watching this. Uh, this has been the, the, the efficacy and the safety of puberty blockers has been well tested and should be a decision between a person and their doctor, between a parent, children, and their doctor. Not this uh, this political invective for someone like, or, or, or yeah, invective for someone like Donald Trump. We know they work, and we also know, by the way, I want to make sure that you understand, we also know the downsides of allowing somebody who knows that they are trans, or who has at least a very significant suspicion that they are trans, to go through the wrong puberty. We know what the negative effects are. We know how that affects mental health, and we know the massively increased risk of suicide from that. What the Republicans here, and what Donald Trump is trying to do, is trying to intervene in, a per, in personal health decisions because of ideological reasons. They believe trans people are wrong. They believe that trans people are somehow targeting children, even though that these are decisions that are not made by trans people, they're made by professional doctors. This is, in short, raw hate. Yes, as some people in chat are mentioning, of course, it, it's very funny that this is coming from the party that pretends to be about small government. They are never about small government. They are about the most invasive form of government you can imagine, a type of government that says that you don't have a right to get treatment that is medically necessary with your doctor, that you don't have a right to learn about a certain type of people that they happen to not like. Let's continue. Can you believe this? I will sign a new executive order instructing every federal agency to cease all programs that promote the concept of sex and gender transition at any age. All programs, a federal-wide ban on 
anything that has to do with gender transition at any age. Do you understand how aggressive that is? There's a reason why I titled this stream uh, the, the, the way that I did, that I titled this stream that Trump announces genocide. He doesn't just care about, he, he's lying when he says he cares about kids here. Instead, he wants to create a federal ban on everything, not just notice his words there. The choice of his words is anything that encourages or discusses gender transition whatsoever for all ages. Grown adults in in in, in the um, in the in, in free America, and yes, keep in mind, yes, as Thelon in chat points out, this isn't just physical transition. He's talking about social transition as well. They don't just want to take away your medications that help that make that let you change the body the way that you need to alleviate your dysphoria. They also want to prevent you from being who you are. And I want people to think just for a second what that actually entails. What it entails when a government is willing to tell you you don't have a right to dress, act, or identify the way you want. I want you to think how far reaching that sort of thing goes. How far they have to be willing to go to police that. Let's continue. I will then ask Congress to permanently stop federal taxpayer dollars from being used to promote or pay for these procedures and pass a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. It'll go very quickly. I will declare that any hospital or health care provider that participates in the chemical or physical mutilation of minor youth will no longer meet federal health and safety standards for Medicaid and Medicare and will be terminated from the program immediately. Furthermore, I will support the creation of a private right of action for victims to sue doctors who have unforgivably performed these procedures on minor children. The Department of Justice will investigate Big Pharma and the big hospital networks to determine whether they have deliberately covered up horrific long-term side effects of sex transitions in order to get rich at the expense now, it's funny. He mentions that he's going to do a investigation to discover if there's been a cover-up. But of course, we know that's, quite frankly, insane. Uh, not the, the data around trans people isn't coming from a single hospital. It isn't coming from a single organization. It's coming from, th from literally thousands of separate organizations, uh, scientists all over the world who are compiling their data and working together. There cannot be a cover-up of something like that. It is impossible. It is actually impossible to create a cover-up of that degree in an environment like that. We are talking separate organizations that are checking one another's works, organizations that are checking over the work of old research. We are talking about schools, hospitals, entire uh, uh, world health organizations, not literally just the, w the World Health Organization, but many uh, associations of psychologists, associations of endocrinologists, associations of physicians, of psychologists. And he wants to have these investigated by federal authorities looking for a cover-up that does not and cannot exist. Vulnerable patients, in this case, very vulnerable. We will also investigate whether Big Pharma or others have illegally marketed hormones and puberty blockers, which are in no way licensed or approved for this use. Uh, that is just a blatant lie. Like, the idea that they're not licensed or approved for, for transition use is, is just insane. Of course it is. It's doctors who are prescribing this. It is, uh, and no, there's no... <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh because that the idea that it's being marketed is, is so absurd. Like, it, 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 it's like, it's like he borrowed the rhetoric from from like the Sackler opioid crisis situation where there is actual evidence of a single company pushing a certain type of painkiller to doctors uh whereas there is no such thing no nothing even close uh, a, a hormone replacement therapy has been used and known about for half of a century cis people 
aka people who are not trans, use hormone therapy regularly. What he is talking about is completely off the rails. My Department of Education will inform states and school districts that if any teacher or school official suggests to a child that they could be trapped in the wrong body, they will be faced with severe consequences, including potential civil rights violations for sex discrimination. The he is saying, he is saying that he wants to convict teachers for mentioning the existence of trans people, for mentioning the idea that there are people who exist who might need to transition, who might be trans, who might, who their body and mind might not match up 100% in that way. That is a, again, a level of aggression that we have not yet seen from a platform like this at all. But Donald Trump is advocating for a, a, a federal crackdown on teachers talking about people who exist. The big farmer or others have illegally marketed hormones and puberty blockers, which are in no way licensed or approved for this use. My Department of Education will inform states and school districts that if any teacher or school official suggests to a child that they could be trapped in the wrong body, they will be faced with severe consequences, including potential civil rights violations for sex discrimination. And uh, the video ends there, which is uh, kind of a, a very strange place uh, for the video to end. But that is typical of Donald Trump. Um, that is the that is the end of that part of the speech. But I want you to understand that's how he opened his new political ad. The left. This has, of course, had millions and millions of views since then. Uh, this has, of course, already been uh, peddled by large, large portions of the the sort of uh, conservative mainstream. But I want you to understand just how far this goes. This is Donald Trump, the single most popular Republican candidate uh, in the history of our entire lives, as far as conservatives go. We have not seen a Republican candidate uh, to this level of popularity uh, and this level of influence. And what he is arguing for is unequivocally genocide. He is arguing that we ban medically necessary care, that we ban the ability for people to identify the way they desire. He is uh, advocating for teachers to be persecuted if they so much as mention the existence of trans people, if they mention the idea that people could even be trans. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about the, about the rhetoric on display here. This is genocidal rhetoric. This is genocidal intent. And he will absolutely attempt this if he is given an opportunity to reach office. And what's worse is that he is signaling to his party and all of his uh, adherents and even people who don't necessarily like Trump uh, that it is open season on queer people. He has declared on a worldwide stage that uh, that the absolutely false, disgusting libel of trans people being uh, groomers who were secretly trying to get your children. Uh, uh, he is he has lied about the uh, about the prevalence of tr trans treatments and also the character of trans treatments. He 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 describes trans health care as uh, as mutilation. Uh, and then he also claims that it's all over the place, which both of these things are false. First of all, it's not mutilation. Children uh, uh, rarely, if ever, receive any gender-related surgery. Uh, and when when there has been, I believe there's a handful of historical examples of minors receiving uh, uh, a, a, a gender-conferring surgery, specifically. Uh, and those incidents were heavily, heavily justified. Uh, uh, this does not occur in the United States statistically. Um, you can. Th this is this is just not something that happens. Um, so he's made that up. Uh, he's made up how how frequent it is. He's made up what it actually is. What 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 actually happens in this situation. And he has argued that this is an eminent threat. I see a lot of people making references to the rhetoric of Nazis and. 
I do think there's an accurate comparison there. But I also want people to recognize that this is, uh, I want people to recognize that this is something unique in many ways. Uh, while it shares character with previous genocidal rhetorics we've seen, while it shares character with the way that people talked about uh, Jewish people in World War II, the way that Americans talked about Japanese people in World War II, which led to uh, concentration camps for Japanese people, when it, where it, while it reflects the, uh, the, uh, the way that uh, uh, far-right people in the, in the uh, European Union talk about uh, innocent migrants, uh, the way they, they, they just blanket demonize them and, and treat them like they're all predatory and evil. Uh, it, it's his own unique thing. And there's also something that is uniquely characteristic to this situation that I think that sometimes gets overlooked, which is the fact that what Donald Trump is trying to do here is that he is trying to not only physically harm and uh, kill uh, trans and queer people, but he's also trying to socially erase a category. What he is trying to do is to make it Im illegal to even discuss the existence of trans people. He wants to remove and illegalize the language that we use to describe ourselves. And you have to ask yourself, why? What is the goal? Well, part of the goal is that you can no longer call yourself trans people. If you call yourself trans people, if you talk about trans issues, you become at threat of the law, which means that the only narrative that exists is the hateful narrative. The only narrative that would be allowed to exist without being persecuted is the hateful narrative. The idea that all gay people, all queer people, all trans people are dangerous and bad. I've been talking about this topic for a really long time. Um, for the entire history of my streaming career, I've been talking explicitly about uh, just how bad uh, the, the state of politics around trans and queer and gay people in the United States is. But uh, oftentimes I was met with a lot of resistance. I was met with a lot of downplaying I was met with a lot of people saying, oh, it's not that bad, it's not that bad, it can't be that bad, we live in a different world, it can't happen again. But the truth is, we all know, anybody who belongs to a marginalized group of any type, but let alone queer people, uh, trans people, gay people, we all know that it is happening and that it's going to happen again if we don't do anything about it. And when I say it happened again, I mean death, mass death, incarceration, punishment, uh, uh, erasure from social life, the banning of our art, the banning of our creations, the banning of our voices, the persecution, the social marginalization. I've been crying about this online, just begging people to hear me out on this for a very, very long time. And um, people, some people said that I was very, very extreme for saying that I felt that within the next decade, or within the next five years that we could see uh, we could see internment for trans people. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if that's the exact shape that things are going to take. But here we have Donald Trump saying that he believes that people should be imprisoned for providing medically necessary care, scientifically verified medically necessary care to trans people, that he believes that people should be arrested and imprisoned for discussing trans people, and that trans people should be treated as dangerous predators. So you tell me if uh, if you really think that it's so far-fetched to believe that people are going to be interned in camps or prisons or elsewise for things like being trans, for things like talking openly about being trans. Unfortunately, I wish that this was the end of the segment. I wish that all I had to talk about here was Donald Trump. But uh, unfortunately, it is not the only thing I have to talk about because unfortunately, in the last couple of weeks, there has been a slew of bills uh, that have passed uh, or gained significant uh, standing in multiple states across the country, specifically replicating the exact arguments and the exact outcomes that Donald Trump has wanted to talk about. Uh, or that, that, that Donald Trump is talking about right here, okay? 
Um, real quick, I'm going to read you a thread which is summarizing a ban that uh, is currently uh, being pushed through the Tennessee uh, 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 Congress, okay? So Tennessee is a place where there have been a number of anti-trans bills already passed and already attempted, and I want you to understand that uh, they have they are one of the states that has uh, that has banned uh, trans healthcare for minors, and I want you to understand where they're going next, okay? A major escalation has just occurred in Tennessee. I obtained from Jace Wilder at the Tennessee Equality Project a new amendment to an anti-trans bill being heard this week that would charge parents with child abuse and ban out-of-state care. I have had Tennessee circled on my calendar for a while and rated as a high risk. I am seeing signals that anti-trans forces plan to push very hard in Tennessee for some of the worst anti-trans enforcement of any state. This is the bill that Matt Walsh broke and supported in 2022. Likewise, I am expecting Chloe Cole and other political detransitioners to show up. Matt Walsh himself lives in Nashville, Tennessee. It does not surprise me, given his heavy influence on this issue, that his home state may see the most heinous proposals. I present copies of the amendment in the article above. So we're going to jump over to this article now. We're going to take a look at it, okay? Here we go. <clears throat> Tennessee has been the site of some of the worst proposed and passed anti-trans laws in the last five years. On my legislative risk map, which tracks, tracks the risk of anti-trans legislation for all states in the United States, I have Tennessee as one of six states falling in the worst anti-trans laws category. As such, any movement of anti-trans bills in Tennessee warrants special attention. A new amendment to a bill, SB0001, that will be heard on Wednesday has recently been provided to me by Jace Wilder of the Tennessee Equality Project, as we said. Um, the bill, including the proposed amendment, is expected to be heard on Wednesday, February 1st, that's today, uh, at 1 o'clock by the Senate, I should probably go check and see if this has been updated, by the Senate Health and Welfare Committee. The provisions in the original bill would ban gender-affirming care for all under 18, which is cruel enough in and of itself. This bill would withdraw people from that care, forcing them to medically detransition. De such a bill is unconscionable and has been advocate, advocated against by medical organizations representing hundreds of thousands of physicians. On Friday, a similar bill was heard in Montana, so there we go, Tennessee and Montana, and those opposing the measure heavily outnumbered those supporting the measure. Similarly, Missouri also held a hearing which included health care bans very similar to this, and it lasted nine hours as testimony was heavily slanted against the bill. I want you all to understand that trans people and their allies are really showing up right now. They are going to these hearings and they are showing up and they are giving their stories and they are testifying. And we'll see if they're able to have victory in that way. Unfortunately, it's a real possibility that these pleas are ignored. Uh, unfortunately, at the current moment, we do not live in a particularly democratic system. State legislatures have largely, well, not largely, but in multiple states have been hijacked by uh, right wing, uh, by right wing voters for a number for a number of reasons. Um, many of these people were able to win uh, via uh, uh, heavily gerrymandered uh, uh, districts. Uh, some of these people were able to win um, simply because of apathy, because people don't know what's actually going on or they're not informed on the issues. And what we have right now is uh, Republicans taking advantage of both violations of democracy and sometimes legitimate uh, democratic wins in order to push laws that are thoroughly anti-scientific and thoroughly undemocratic. Transgender kids and their families pleaded with legislators to not pass this and harm them. Utah became the first state to fully enact a health care ban into law this weekend. That's what we're going to talk about after this. It already has been challenged in court. We don't know where that's going to go. The Tennessee bill contains similar language to all of the above bills, but this new amendment would make it even worse by making illegal all alternative means to obtaining gender-affirming care. It would target out-of-state telehealth providers, ban distribution, quote-unquote, and charge providers and parents with child abuse for following medical best practices. See these three amended segments of the bill. Here is the bill itself. Subdivision A1 applies to medical procedures that are performed or administered in the state or performed or administered on a resident of the state via telehealth. 
distribution of hormones or puberty blockers to a minor. A person shall not knowingly provide a hormone or puberty blocker by any means to a minor. This is creating a drug war, okay? This is creating a HRT drug war, which is ridiculous. Uh, the idea that hormones, basic hormones, need to become a, a treated as, as if it's a dangerous and addictive chemical is absurd. Tennessee code is amended by designating existing language as a subdivision A and adding the following new subdivision. Abuse also exists when a person under 18 of years is suffering from, has sustained, or may be in immediate danger of suffering from, suffering from or sustaining a wound, injury, disability, physical, or mental condition caused by a parent, relative, guardian, or caretaker's consent on behalf of the person to administer or perform a med medical procedure as defined above that is in violation of above. So this is saying that, uh, that doctors, parents, Etc. Regardless of the consent of all people involved, would be medic would be uh, legally responsible uh, or, or legally uh, uh, um, convictable of abuse against a child, even if the child had expressed a medical need for that thing, even if doctors had proved that it was safe, and even if parents proved. Collectively, these provisions would ban out-of-state care for trans youth. The telehealth provision applies to residents and does not contain provisions that specify that the care has to occur within the state. Now, that's another important thing to note, um, which is, of course, that this is an attempt to literally not just ban, uh, not just ban the practice in the state, but ban the people. You have to understand how this law is being structured. You won't be able to receive a scientifically proven, medically necessary uh, uh, treatment, whether drugs or otherwise, uh, at all if you happen to live in this state. Which means that if you're trans, you have to move out. You have to leave Tennessee. Or you have to live, not honestly, you have to not be treated for the thing that you need medical treatment for. Do you see what I'm saying about them attempting to define you out of existence? You either have to live, um, <laughs> you either have to live without the treatment you need, or you have to leave. And I want to also note something else that we're going to be talking about shortly in this segment um, is the ban on drag. A number of states have uh, are are in the process of passing anti-drag bills. In fact, I believe one state already passed successfully an anti-drag bill. And you will notice that um, these anti-drag bills are actually um, nonsense. They essentially make it illegal for uh, anyone to perform in what they define, uh, uh, sorry, to perform or appear in public uh, 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 with what they define as cross-sex clothing or makeup, which, by the way, also, interestingly, by the language of these laws, which are gaining ground in some states, uh, would also uh, ban you from ha being a from just putting makeup on and singing at a concert. Of course, let's be real, they're not going to enforce that part of it, but it would technically be against the letter of the law for even a cis person to put on makeup and perform. Um, but of course, some of these laws go so far as to say that you're not allowed to do it in public at all. And of course, who gets to define what is performance? Who gets to define what is cross-sex clothes? If you're walking outside and you're humming and walking along the side of the road and a cop decides that you look like a gross uh, gay queero uh, and they decide to arrest you for that, who's gonna? what are you going to be able to say about that? And of course, I also want to point out the the way these work in concert which is you ban the medicine that allows people to successfully transition and and be who they want to be publicly which of course i i, I understand like i'm non-binary i think it's bullshit to try and define cross-sex clothing but let's just be clear this is not going to protect binary trans people either this is not going to protect stealth trans people either they will ban the medicine that allows you to pass and then they will convict you for being in drag if you don't pass.
Do you see how that's a a one-two punch going on there? Do you see what the end goal is? Is finding a way to make it legal to imprison trans people? Legislation targeting out-of-state providers and bringing transgender youth out of the state was first considered in Idaho's 2022 bill. This bill would have banned traveling across state lands with trans youth to obtain gender-affirming care, which is, of course, in demands policing. That means you have to have people policing your travel in and out of the state. It's, in, it's this is insane. It's insane. It would not. It would have specified a felony under genital mutilation laws for helping a minor travel out of state for gender affirming care. Insane. The bill passed the Idaho House on a party line vote before being killed in the Idaho Senate. Thank God. SB could similarly be used to target people trying to obtain gender affirming care out of state. The use of child abuse mechanisms is particularly egregious. If found guilty of providing or consenting to gender-affirming care under this state amendment, trans youth could be taken away from their parents, and their parents could be charged with crimes. You guys all remember a couple months ago when everybody was arguing about the uh, definition of genocide? Well, removing children from their parents as a uh, 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 on political grounds is a def is definitionally an act of genocide. And here we have it being part and parcel of the laws that are being pushed forward. It is also important to note that these same provisions could be used later to target abortion care for trans youth. The weaponization of the state law against telehealth providers and against distribution has led to several states considering or passing laws that protect providers in those states. The most recent example of protective legislation that has passed is the Patient and Provider Protection Act in Illinois. Add H.509 uh, in Massachusetts and... Senator Friedman of Massachusetts specifically cites overreaching policies like the proposed Tennessee Amendment as a reason for its existence. Specifically, an act expanding protections for reproductive and gender-affirming care. This protects health care providers and those seeking reproductive and gender-affirming care in Massachusetts from other states' overreach, overreaching extraterritorial anti-abortion and anti-gender-affirming care laws. Okay, so this goes into some more details about the law. We're going to move on to another uh, another example of this now that we've uh, sort of explored this in full. Um, oh, actually, no, there's one more thing I want to point out. Even if the amendment does not get introduced, the bill itself represents a major attack on the transgender community of Tennessee. The forced medical detransitioning of trans youth would, would absolutely harm youth in the state. Tennessee already has a suicide rate that is 30% higher than the national average, and trans youth are among those who are at especially high risk of suicide. So I want you to notice this as well, which is that uh, this is not just a, a, a physical form of genocide. This is a psychological form of genocide. This is a, a, a goal to pressure trans people to be so much in a state of despair, to put them to have no options, to oppress them to the point that they consider suicide. Of course, the bill has been heavily promoted by every single major uh, right-wing news source. As many people are saying in my chat right now, they want you dead. And what is mama's rule number one? Do not fucking die. Let's talk about another one. Utah's governor has signed a bill banning gender affirming care for transgender youth. Salt Lake City. Utah, Utah's Republican governor on this last Saturday night signed bills that ban youth from receiving gender-affirming health care and allow families to receive scholarships to pay for education outside of the public school system. Both are measures that are part of larger nationwide movements. Governor Spencer Cox, who had not taken a public position on transgender care measure, signed it a day after the legislature sent it to his desk. Utah's measure prohibits trans surgery for youth and disallows the use of hormone treatments for minors who have not yet been diagnosed formally with gender dysphoria. Now, this is interesting because, uh, <laughs> because there, are, there are risks, of course, to getting a formal diagnosis of gender dysphoria. And also, I should note that hormone treatments are used in cis people, even cis youth, all the time for reasons that are unconnected to gender dysphoria. 
uh, uh, HRT is used to combat acne. It can be used to combat uh, uh, growth issues. But these laws are indiscriminate. The state's Republican-dominated legislature prioritized the ban and considered a first draft of the measure less than 10 days ago. This was fast-tracked. Two days after the legislature opened this year's session on January 17th. Cox's approval of the bill comes as lawmakers in at least 18 states consider similar bills. There are 18 states attempting to push this right now. 18. Lava Monster points out this was specifically brought up during the Tennessee hearings. A Republican explicitly stated that breast implants for cis girls under 18 would not be banned. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting? In all of their discussions of mutilation, they never discuss circumcision. They never discuss female genital mutilation. They never discuss fucking plastic surgery that is pressured and actually unironically uh, uh, marketed at young women. Isn't that fucking curious? Cox explained in a statement that his decision was based on his belief that it was prudent to pause these permanent and life-altering treatments for new patients until more and better research can help determine the long-term consequences. Keep in mind, this is a governor, not a doctor. This is a idiot fucking politician trying to tell you that there is... Uh, that the, the, the research isn't there. The research is there. Puberty blockers have been around for a long time. They've been studied to great degrees. We already know the upsides and the downsides, and doctors already discuss this with their patients. Why is a governor getting involved in this? Well, we all know the answer, which is genocide. These people have a religious an ideological opposition to the existence of trans people. The existence of trans people pulls their worldview into question, and that is not tolerable. So their answer is that they need to stamp trans people out of existence by one means or another, and they are more than happy to do so by trying to pressure young trans people into killing themselves. A letter was issued by the ACLU of Utah. This is the American Civil Liberties U Union. By cutting off medical treatment supported by every single ma ma major medical institution or association in the United States, the bill compromises the health and well-being of adolescents with gender dysphoria. It, is, it ties the hands of doctors and parents by restricting access to the only evidence-based treatment available for a serious medical condition, and it impedes the doctor's ability to fulfill their professional obligations. That is correct. This, this lawmaking is forcing doctors to violate the Hippocratic Oath. At least a dozen other states are considering similar legislation in what has emerged as a landmark year for school choice ballot. Uh, for, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. This is a separate one. Sorry. <clears throat> Cox also signed another measure that would give students a school choice style scholarships to attend schools outside the public education system. Keep in mind, it's not students who are making this decision. That's a, that's a little bit of a misdirection. It's parents who are, who are being given the ability to remove their kids from the public education system and instead put them into private, sometimes literally religious institutions. Now, many states already have that ability. Most states allow you, if you really want to, to homeschool your kids. Um, but when they do this to make it easier, it's because they want to be able to, I, and I'm telling you this from experience, okay? I want you to understand, I grew up in a Christian cult. I'm not talking like you're nice everyday Christians. I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian cult, a fundamentalist Christian cult, which ran an unaccredited high school. And because of the laws in my state, I was allowed to be taken out of public uh, uh, education and put into a unaccredited Christian high school, which thankfully I was only there for one year because there were so many issues that even my hyper-Christian parents decided that it wasn't worth it. But I was not taught science while I was there. I was taught Christian literature. I was taught Christian science. We were taught that evolution was wrong.
Look at this here. See, this is what I'm talking about. The Utah measure allocates $42 million in taxpayer funds to pay for scholarships so that students can attend private schools. This is the state sponsoring private religious schools. Make no mistake. And these two, these two were combined into a single law. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Kind of a strange thing, isn't it? This was from yesterday. Terrible news. Mississippi's gender-affirming care ban for trans youth just passed out of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Mississippi may be the next state following Utah to fully ban gender-affirming care. Please contact your senators. This is going to kill trans kids. So this is on the desk to be signed. We're going to find out whether or not the governor is going to sign this law. The Mississippi Senate Judiciary Committee B is discussing HB 1125, which prohibit transgender related, related health care for young people in Mississippi. Some amazing organizations in the state are focused on defeating this terrible bill. You can watch this live. This bill is mean spirited, cruel, and unnecessarily inserting the state of Mississippi into doctor patient relationships. It must be stopped. There's another law that I want to discuss. Read you an article from Time that was published just six hours ago. But this has been going on for a couple of days. Florida may force high school student athletes to disclose their menstrual history. Florida is debating currently whether to require all high school athletes to disclose their menstrual history. Parents and experts generally agree that it's important for student athletes to be in good health, but many critics say new draft physical evaluation form by the Florida School High School Florida High School Athletics Association, God, that's a mouthful, which makes the menstruation questions mandatory, is a part of the state's attempts to roll back transgender rights. They argue the school district should not have the right to access and store such personal information as, as a condition of competing in high school sports. The menstrual history question has been a part of Florida's athletics pre-participation form for more than 20 years, but they were previously optional. Now many argue it's time to remove them altogether. Here's what to know. The updated draft of the physical evaluation form published online asks athletes the following questions. Have you ever had a menstrual period? If yes, athletes must answer the must note must answer the following. How old were you when you had your first period? When was your most recent period? How many periods have you had in the last 12 months? Other than these, the form mainly asks about cardiac health, medications, and history of injuries. What would happen if Florida makes these questions mandatory? As of now, student athletes in Florida can opt out of answering these questions. But if students choose not to respond under these circumstances where it's mandatory to, they risk failing the medical examination that all athletes must successfully pass in order to participate in a sport. Critics have noted this policy would be a major challenge for trans athletes who may have to out themselves with their responses to the questions. And as we know, Florida has been attempting to push trans bans on participation in sports. Interesting. Interesting how much targeting is being done specifically at young trans people. It's almost as if the real people harming the kids are not the doctors who are trying to help the kids feel better, are not the parents who are trying to get the right treatment for them, it's not the kids themselves, it's not teachers, it's politicians who are deliberately going out of their way to target and terrorize young children in the name of purging trans people from the public eye. Do other states ask female student athletes about their menstrual history? Texas school districts also ask female athletes very similar questions about their menstrual history. And of course, these are mandatory to complete. So Texas is actually the first place to have put a law like this. And we all know what happened in Texas, right? The uh, now uh, arrested former uh, AG who tried to push through a insane letter that literally extrajudicially persecuted trans families. I'm not kidding you. Ken Paxton pushed through a letter that extrajudicially targeted trans families despite being in violation of courts that told him that it was overturned and the governor greg abbott explicitly ordered uh uh uh, uh dhs department of human services uh, employees of the state of texas 
to use personal devices while working on the cases investigating families with trans kids. You want to know why? Because they'd been ordered originally by a federal court to not persecute those families. But they did anyway. Demon Speaker says they have a list of us in Texas. Yes, I know. They composed a list in Texas based off of gender marker changes. There is already lists drawn up of trans people in, in, in Texas, and I believe that such a law passed in Florida. Now, I want to take a look at this map real quick. Take a look at this map right now, okay? <laughs> yes, as Kildre says, we are well into the balkanization process. This is a map was updated just a couple of days ago and i believe there actually are updates to come but i want you to take a look at this map uh the dark red is the worst currently active trans laws now of course utah is now red this one has not been updated since the utah law passed the utah law uh and soon to be uh, uh missouri missouri um over here these are both going to be red states like dark red states here then we have high risk within two years. This means that they have uh, a significant Republican control of the legislation. And then, of course, moderate risk is Georgia, North Carolina, and Kansas. Now, you might recall a couple of years ago under Trump that North Carolina banned trans people from using uh, the, uh, uh, the, the bathroom that was not associated with their birth sex, which of course was unenforceable and actually ended up uh, cost, costing North Carolina millions of dollars because every reasonable person on the planet, uh, every even corporations were saying, this is insane. We can't comply with this. What do you want us to do? Inspect people as they go into the bathroom? That's fucking insane. But just remember that happened. That passed and was a law in North Carolina. I also want to remind you that under Donald Trump, trans people were entirely banned from the military. Do you all, so many people have forgotten this. Trans people were specifically singled out and banned from the military and also specifically called out in a department of, of uh, uh, or in a DHHS Department of Human, Homeland and Human Se Service. I can always forget the, uh, why, why, why am I blanking on this stupid fucking acronym? Uh, regardless, a memo was sent that was designed to deliberately target uh, women's shelters and deliberately try and target and teach these Christian, mostly Christian-run shelters how to spot trans women. And it contains stereotypes as inspecting people for Adam's apples. I'm not kidding you. That happened under Donald Trump. And of course, these blue states are the ones that have the safest states. Washington now has constitutional protection for trans people. Oregon has constitutional protection for trans people. Um, uh, Connecticut has constitutional protection for trans people. DC has constitutional protection for trans people. New York has constitutional protection for trans people. I don't know for sure about California and Colorado, but their laws are in a pretty good situation. This is what the, the United States looks like now. There is no consensus between these blue states here and these red states. These states are completely divergent from reality. They do not, they, they are literally falsely uh, uh, promoting misinformation about the science. They are deliberately acting in defiance of what of all uh, nonpartisan medical knowledge that we have. It's very hard to articulate exactly what every step of this advancement of genocide in the United States against trans and queer people is going to look like. But it's not good. And this is what it looks like right now. A death march of state after state after state that is specifically targeting children and the reason why they're targeting children is because they need to pretend they need that that goddamn uh libel that that we just watched just a couple of minutes ago we're going to watch it again just so we understand how 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 serious this is from donald trump this libel that that trans people are targeting children 
when in reality, these laws are hurting children. These laws are objectively harming children. And not only that, but they're creating an atmosphere of hate and danger. So far, what we've been talking about here is all legal. Everything that we've been talking about is legislative. But I want you to understand what the atmosphere, what an atmosphere like this will produce. Trans people are the victims of hate crimes quite regularly. Trans, uh, trans businesses over the last year, uh, uh, two or three years as this as this rhetoric has gone up have become the targets of of unbelievable levels of terrorism and harassment um just a couple of weeks ago i went over a video or i i, I made a video going over the hundreds of anti-trans anti-lgbt protests that have occurred at random businesses i'm talking about and oh let's not forget the shooting that just occurred, a, a mass shooting who, where the justification for it was targeting drag, drag performers, was targeting LGBT people with no evidence of anything, just blanket hate. Base, and, and they justified it using the libel that we're talking about. The libel that Donald Trump is now pushing on a national level. The libel that is justifying these laws, the atmosphere around the laws is arguably even worse than the laws themselves. The laws, of course, are terrible. But what it encourages is it encourages people to take things into their own hands. It encourages people in blue states to, to, to act unbelievably violently. And of course, all of this is wrapped up in a broader picture, which is that, keep in mind, Donald Trump is still pushing the idea that democracy has been hijacked and that brave patriots need to take it back. Donald Trump has not backed off his election claims. The idea that he was that the election was stolen by a a cabal of leftists. Democracy is is in shambles in the United States of America. And what we have in its place is a a schism where, wherein a hateful, heavily armed, violent, uh, and very, very active faction, a minority, I should note, by quite a long shot, there are significantly less Republicans in the United States than there are uh, anything else. But nonetheless, there are a large amount of Republicans, and these people have convinced themselves that they have a need to retake America for God and for country, for patriotism, and for Donald Trump. And the enemies that they've chosen to be the sort of impetus for this is trans people. Trans people are how they justify that the world has fallen into a degenerated state. Trans people are who they target. They are who they uh, obsess over. And I hope you all will understand why I opened this stream with a big section going over the lefty gun culture about talking about being armed, talking about learning community defense. I hope you will understand why I did that. I have to talk about one more thing before we wrap this particular segment and then, uh, and then we're going to talk about something totally unrelated to this. We're going to do something fun after this that does not have anything to do with this type of politics, okay? But I want to talk about this, okay? Florida teachers are emptying classroom libraries to avoid going to jail. Florida again comes up. You'll notice that Florida and Texas are kind of like the hubs of this. You know, Greg Abbott and Ron DeSantis, notoriously uh, partisan, extremely anti-LGBT, extremely vocally anti-LGBT, extremely, well, Ron DeSantis is trying to make a power bid for himself. I was going to say pro-Trump, but Ron DeSantis has kind of moved away from Trump a little bit because he wants power for himself, but... Regardless, he was super pro-Trump before. 
A new statewide policy is telling teachers to cover or remove books from shelves until they have been reviewed or potentially face felony charges. School teachers in Florida have begun removing entire shelves of books from their class classrooms after a new policy passed that said they could be charged with felonies for expo exposing students to books that are considered pr prurient or offensive. Interesting, isn't that? Earlier this month, teachers in Manatee County, Florida, were sent directives from the school district to remove or cover all classroom libraries until all materials can be reviewed in order to comply with a new rule voted on by the Florida Department of Education. I had plans to remove access to my library on Monday, a Florida teacher in Manatee County told Motherboard on the condition of anonymity because they feared retaliation from their employer. By 10 a.m. Monday morning, my library had been completely covered and made inaccessible to students as per the document. Chris Guerreri, who runs an, an education blog and has been a teacher at Duval Co County Public Schools in Florida for two decades, says he received dozens of messages from Florida teachers who have either received an official direction to clear out their classroom bookshelves or have already done so in anticipation of receiving one. I got an email from an art teacher who said they're making the art teacher get rid of all of their art books. They can't even have their books in the classroom. They just can't, like, cover them up and put them off, off to the side. Here we go. This is the penalty for the violation. Any person violating the provisions of this section commits a felony of the third degree, punishable uh, as provided in another portion of the law that describes how felonies are punished. To protect librarians and media specialists, it must be clear that a book depicting nudity, sexual conduct, sexual excitement does not meet the tenets of harmful to Myers, minors, which are predominantly appeals to a prurient, shameful, or morbid interest, is patently offensive to prevailing standards in the adult community, and is taken as a whole without serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value for minors. Notice that all of these decisions are being made by the state government. This, this is a whitelisting system. The reason why all these books are being removed is because the state is personally hand choosing what books they deem to be valuable, morally uh, morally valuable, artistically valuable, politically valuable, etc. And it just so happens that Florida is also the state which was pushing all of the don't say gay bills. And also the menstrual tracking and also the HRT bans and whose leader is constantly screaming about trans people. We are literally at the point I'm, in American history where we have sections of the union that are mass banning books and creating a white list of morally appropriate books that can be taught. And we know that trans and gay and LGBT books are not going to be on that list. We already know this is the case. We've already seen it. And in fact, uh, I have another post here that explicitly shows this. Let me show you this real quick. A group called Freedom to Read did an experiment. Yesterday, we logged almost 200 challenges. About 150 of those resulted in immediate removals. This is a picture of all of the books who were removed from one high school library in one day in one district due to the objections of one man. This is not freedom. So as you can see here, we have a whole bunch of books here. I'll give you the sun uh, is one of them. Maybe some of you may have read that. I don't know all of these books. Maybe some of you know these books. I wonder if we can get a closer look at some of them. Native was removed. A child called It. They removed a child called It. This book is anti-racist was removed. The Trans Teen Survival Guide was removed. Interesting. The female of the species removed. I wish I knew more about these individual books, but I've not read most of these. I remember people reading I'll Give You the Sun, though, when I was younger.
The notices follow the passage of a controversial law signed by Governor, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis last year, which requires each book made available or assigned to students in schools be selected by the school district employee who holds a valid educational media specialist certificate, which is issued, of course, by Ron DeSantis's government, interestingly. The new rule is a part of a training policy for school librarians, which was recently approved by the Florida Board of Education after months of campaigning on the part of right-wing groups such as Moms for Liberty, which have strategically placed members on school boards across the state. The law creates individual liability for teachers who knowingly or unknowingly provide access to a book that is deemed harmful to a minor, allowing them to be charged with a third degree felony. Some groups and lawmakers are trying to expand these definitions of harmful, which of course they will succeed in because the definition of harmful is determined by Ron DeSantis' government, to include any books with LGBT characters or themes. We have a huge Moms for Liberty chapter in this area who would love to find a reason to target teachers who don't buy into their fascist mentality. The only alternative to closing my library is going book by book to make sure each book is listed in our district library catalog. I have hundreds of books in my library. I haven't had hours and hours to sit and do that this week, so my books remain inaccessible. Here's a video of it. Every single book from the library removed. In response to this directive, Florida teachers began posting pictures and videos of empty classroom bookshelves to personal accounts and private online groups in an effort to try and get the word out. Some of these posts were then shared more publicly in a Twitter thread uh, by Willie Carver Jr., a former English teacher in Kentucky who says he left the profession last summer after witnessing firsthand the censorship efforts happening in schools in his home state. I feel like we're increasingly asking teachers to do immoral things like outing students, refusing to use students' per correct gender and pronouns, excluding black voices or queer voices from their curriculum, or not allowing LGBTQ students to even have equal access to books, Carver told Motherboard. As Motherboard previously reported, schools in some states have enacted book bans that specifically target titles by black and LGBTQ authors, which conservative politicians and groups described lied as pornographic. When Carver saw the post from Florida teachers with empty classroom shelves, he thought about the queer and transgender students he's taught over the years, including a former trans student who recently committed suicide. That was weighing on me, he said. When you forbid a word or a concept to the extent that a teacher will go to prison, what you're really doing is demonizing. You're telling a student that what you are is so bad that your teacher would go to jail. I do not understand how, in good conscience, people are enacting rules like this, especially when they consider the effect it will have on children in the room. The answer is genocide. There is an ongoing genocide targeted predominantly at queer people, but also at all LGBT, or sorry, predominantly at trans people, but including all queer people and many, many more in this country. With all this in mind, we are going to watch this Trump Trump speech one more time. Keep in mind that all of these articles that we have read were written before Trump dropped his video. Trump's video is the freshest, it's the it's the it is the newest thing. And I want you to understand the escalation. We have single states that have managed to succeed in these horrifically draconian genocidal laws, and then this comes. We're going to watch it one more time. I want you to dwell on this, think about it, and keep it in mind. I want you to take this into your mind whenever you consider your political positions and what you believe about the world. Do you believe that these people are going to fight fair? Do you believe these people are going to participate in democratic processes? Do you believe these people are going to give a shit about the law? Do you believe these people do right now? Keep that all in mind. Let's watch this one more time. The left-wing gender insanity being pushed on our children is an act of child abuse. Very simple. Here's my plan to stop the chemical, physical, and emotional mutilation of our youth. On day one, I will revoke Joe Biden's cruel policies on so-called gender-affirming care. Ridiculous. A process that includes giving kids puberty blockers, mutating their physical appearance, and ultimately performing surgery on minor children. Can you believe this? 
I will sign a new executive order instructing every federal agency to cease all programs that promote the concept of sex and gender transition at any age. I will then ask Congress to permanently stop federal taxpayer dollars from being used to promote or pay for these procedures and pass a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. It'll go very quickly. I will declare that any hospital or healthcare provider that participates in the chemical or physical mutilation of minor youth will no longer meet federal health and safety standards for Medicaid and Medicare and will be terminated from the program immediately. Furthermore, I will support the creation of a private right of action for victims to sue doctors who have unforgivably performed these procedures on minor children. The Department of Justice will investigate Big Pharma and the big hospital networks to determine whether they have deliberately covered up horrific long-term side effects of sex transitions in order to get rich at the expense of vulnerable patients, in this case, very vulnerable. We will also investigate whether Big Pharma or others have illegally marketed hormones and puberty blockers, which are in no way licensed or approved for this use. My Department of Education will inform states and school districts that if any teacher or school official suggests to a child that they could be trapped in the wrong body, they will be faced with severe consequences, including potential civil rights violations for sex discrimination. That is the Republican agenda. The Republican agenda is explicit genocide. Donald Trump is the current voice of the Republican Party, the single most popular Republican candidate, the single most popular uh, Republican uh, 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 speaking, you know, uh, platform, and his his declaration from just yesterday is genocide. Do you understand now why I said that I was not exaggerating even slightly with my title? We have to take this seriously. Everybody, all of you out there who are listening right now, you have to take this seriously. And the and the the answer is not to lose hope. The answer is not to collapse. The answer is to stand up, to stand together, to help each other stand up, to uh, to build, to strategize, to organize, to find one another, to back up works of art, to uh, uh, to to save an archive, to adopt. Uh, better personal safety and better community safety and to be ready for what these people are bringing because this is just the beginning. If you don't think that Donald Trump's rhetoric is going to get worse, it's only gotten worse. It's We didn't think it could get much worse. Well, some people, some people did. I did. Many people didn't think it could get much worse than when he was in office, but we've seen that it's only getting worse. He's now actively advocating to ban all all ability to transition for all ages he's act he's actively saying that he is going to target and persecute doctors who help trans people trans people themselves the families of trans people want people to take this seriously. I want people to uh, to share this information to content creators, to voices, to everywhere, to every corner of the world. Let them see exactly what's going on and how we have to react. Now more than ever, it is absolutely important that we push back on this together.